the best interest of the patient is the only interest to be considered. And in order that the sick may have the benefit of advancing knowledge, union of forces is necessary. Will Mayo. On July 1st, 1907, the very first patient was registered under the revolutionary Unified Medical Records System, invented by a Mayo Clinic physician, Dr. Henry Plummer, and his colleague, Mabel Root, in alignment with the Mayo Clinic's promise of putting the patient first. The Unified Medical Record would gather, track, and store patient information far more efficiently than any other system before it, hastening the care for patients as well as aiding communication between the patients and physicians. The Unified Medical Record would give way to modern day systems like MyChart that further the access that patients and physicians have with patient records as well as the communication between physicians and their patients. On August 21st, 1883, a tornado devastated Rochester, Minnesota. A feeble telegraph was sent to Governor Lucius Hubbard. 24 people killed, over 40 seriously injured, one-third of the city laid waste. We need immediate help. After barely surviving the tornado themselves, the local doctor, Dr. W. W. Mayo, along with his two sons, stepped in to help. Teaming up with the Franciscan sisters, they cared for the wounded throughout the night. A few months after the tornado, Mother Alfred Mose, who helped organize the aid of the survivors, had an idea of a permanent hospital in Rochester. She told Dr. Mayo, with our faith and hope and energy, it will succeed. In 1889, the Mayo brothers and the Franciscan sisters founded St. Mary's Hospital, later becoming the Mayo Clinic. With the Mayo brothers as the two physicians and the sisters as the nurses, St. Mary's went from the clinic in the cornfield to an internationally respected medical center. St. Mary's was founded on the basis of respect for all. As the sisters said, they opened it to all sick persons, regardless of their color, sex, financial status, or professed religion. As well as a model of their work, the patient comes first. This was the first time that a medical institution conveyed that all their patients mattered and was the key for the population to understand how they should be treated in the field of medicine. In 1901, Dr. Will Mayo was called to a rural farmhouse with a case of suspected leukemia. Dr. Will asked Dr. Albert Plummer, another local physician, to consult on the case. Due to Dr. Albert Plummer's illness, he sent his oldest son, Dr. Henry Plummer. Hearing this, Dr. Henry Plummer packed a microscope and was on his way. At the site, Dr. Will Mayo extracted blood samples from the patient and a hired hand. This was when Dr. Plummer stepped in with his microscope to show the world-renowned Dr. Will Mayo the difference between the blood of a person with leukemia and one without leukemia. Dr. Will Mayo was so impressed with the knowledge of the recent college graduate that he told his brother, Dr. Charlie Mayo, we really should hire this young man. Within the next two weeks, Dr. Plummer was the head of the laboratories at St. Mary's Hospital. Dr. William Mayo was famously known for saying, Hiring Dr. Henry Plummer was the best day's work. While working at St. Mary's Hospital, Dr. Plummer's work was frequently halted by the sluggish ledger system. The ledger system was the system in place for taking patient information, storing, and sharing it. Using the ledger system, patient information was stored with the individual physician or nurse who had recorded the notes. If another physician needed information about that certain patient, they would have to hunt down the person who wrote it this system had many flaws, including the limitation of communication among the staff. There would be constant misunderstanding and miscommunication for the staff and patients. This took a huge amount of time and effort that could have been used on the patient themselves, and was found by Dr. Plummer to not be in the best interest of the patient or the hospital. Dr. Plummer saw an opportunity to improve the communication of the Mayo Clinic's current patient information system. He knew how many misunderstandings there were between not only the patient and the physicians, but also physicians working together at the Mayo Clinic. In alignment with the mission and values of the Mayo Clinic, he and his colleague Mabel Root started to work on a new system. 
In the summer of 1907, the two of them came out with the first edition of the Unified Medical Record, or UMR for short, Mayo Clinic's own medical record system. From there, they created the numeric registration system, which worked alongside the UMR to give new patients a number which made tracking and organizing patient information much more efficient. The UMR worked by consolidating a patient's medical information down to one chart by giving each patient at the Mayo Clinic a number, which is where the numeric registration system would come in. Using the new numbering system, getting access to all of a single patient's information was now possible. This helped when diagnosing a patient and once diagnosed, helped find the right treatment to move forward. After the patient's appointment, their chart would be sent to a storage room where any physician at Mayo, with the right access, could get it, rather than having to hunt it down on their own. The UMR also standardized and organized the way that any physician at Mayo would take down patient information during an appointment. This made searching through the documents and communicating the needed information much more rapid. To make the communication of patients' info even faster, Mayo used pneumatic tubes to transport the charts throughout the clinic. As Dr. Steve Peters, Vice Medical Information Officer at Mayo, puts it, Plumer's invention is an early example of streamlining care with the patient in mind. The first patient under the new system was documented on July 1st of 1907, and to this day, the system has documented over 8 million new patients. Dr. Plummer's invention of the unified medical record had an immediate effect on the Mayo Clinic. The care for its patients was immensely faster and more reliable and had fewer mix-ups with the patient information than before. This revolutionary way of medical communication started the use of pneumatic tube systems throughout the Mayo Clinic. It also inspired the creation of more pneumatic tube systems being built to go further and faster for better care for patients. The whole project was centered around the patient's well-being and the Mayo Clinic made it very noticeable. As the UMR and other systems continued to be updated and improved upon, so did the reliability of patient care at the Mayo. The unified medical record standardized the methods that physicians and nurses used for taking and sharing medical notes. Physicians and medical staff after the unified medical record wouldn't have to worry about missing information or wasting time searching for records. Even the smallest amount of time saved by these records was a symbol of the Mayo Clinic's devotion to the patient. Their patients were the sole priority and their inner staff communication made the care of the Mayo Clinic that much more revolutionary. Word spread of the Mayo Clinic's accomplishments with the unified medical record and it soon became the standard method for communicating patient information. The spread of this new technology was at first slow but gradually gained momentum until it was hard to find a hospital that wasn't using a system like the unified medical record. The growth of more and more patients relying on the Mayo Clinic for healthcare made them develop and adjust their system for even more efficient ways of communication between physicians and the medical staff. To this day, the innovations of the Mayo Clinic make waves around the world. From the UMR documenting 8 million patients since its invention, or the Mayo Clinic serving 1 million patients every year through its patient-focused lens. Or new innovations like the Plummer Project, a 2015 project started at Mayo Clinic that, as Dr. Steve Peters, co-director of the project, says, is a project where we're going from a unified record on paper and now converging to a single integrated electronic system. Or the Mayo Clinic's recent partnerships with Apple and Microsoft that created apps to further the patient's understanding and access to their own health records. These apps help the patient and their doctors stay in touch about upcoming appointments or questions patients have for their doctors that don't require a full appointment. The Mayo Clinic hasn't just helped serve its own patients. Every other hospital and countless companies have adopted Mayo's record-keeping system in one way or another. Modern-day hospital systems like Epic or Cerner are based on Mayo's UMR. Many of these communication tools that can be found in today's medical field can be traced back to the Mayo Clinic's UMR. The Mayo Clinic communicates to the masses the message that they are at the forefront of their hospitals and its innovations. 
and has set the universal standard in the medical field that the patient comes first.